So the second area that we, we talk about a lot of benefit uh, or uniqueness, I should say, that, that pure storage brings with VCF on um, Flash Deck is fabric flexibility. And what we mean by that is that today, if you look at HCI options, your only deployment choices is uh, Ethernet. And there's a lot of customers that have investments in fiber channel. There's a lot of customers who have preferences over their storage platforms that they want to use. Um, and what we're doing is enabling customers to run on any fabric that they want, um, support any type of deployment that they want, whether it's VMFS or VVOLs, um, and to be able to leverage those investments that they have or to deploy on the preferences that they have and not force them to, to move onto a different fabric. We also believe that um, our architecture is future-proof. So if customers want to move from one fabric to the other, they can do so non-disruptively with this architecture. Um, whether that's fiber channel to iSCSI or to a next generation pro storage protocol like NVMe over Fabric. Now, I, I, I do want to level set with everyone. Um, what you see on, on your screen here is the supported protocols from vSphere, but protocol support is a little different when you get into VCF. And so we've updated this slide to represent VCF 4.1. And so I want to share with you um, the different types of support and what the, those definitions mean with VCF. So there's a, a notion of what's called principal storage. Principal storage is um, all the, the, the deployment types that are, are highlighted on your screen here, vSAN, NFS, VMFS with fiber channel, and any form of VVOLs. Principal storage means that uh, VCF can actually provision the storage along with the rest of the compute, networking, vCenter um, you know, stack at the time that the workload domain is created. Right? So everything is managed end to end. The second form of storage is called supplemental storage. This is storage that is supported. However, the storage must be imported or added to the workload domain following its creation, right? So there's an additional step there. Um, the the um, support for principal and supplemental storage is an ever evolving engineering effort from VMware. VCF 4.1 just added VVOLs. So prior to this week, VVOLS was actually sitting in supplemental storage. And so um, we expect that you will see more of the supplemental storage protocols added to principal. That's what's communicated to us by VMware. And you'll see that um, over, over time. One thing to note is uh, fiber channel over ethernet is currently not supported with VCF 4.1, as well as it's not supported within our product portfolio. Any questions on fabric? It was kind of simple, but it, it's a topic that comes up quite often. Okay, nice and easy peasy, get us back on, uh, on pace. So let's talk about simplifying management. Um, I mentioned earlier that the, the new tools like SDDC Manager and VC, VLCM, which is vSphere Lifecycle Manager, um, has a lot of attractiveness around providing simplicity to the VMware infrastructure. And I want to share with you how we enhance that. First is from a, an architectural design on storage. Um, the flash array, one of the first two workloads that the design of the flash array was uh, founded on was supporting VMware. You can see here a long list of bullets on your right-hand side. But the, 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 the base goal was we wanted to eliminate the complexities and the trade-offs that existed with SAN and NAS and even HCI platforms today. Um, this means all of our data set features are on, meaning all the data is reduced, it's uh, all encrypted, we've got automatic QoS, um, as well as um, we, we deliver consistent performance through failure and maintenance, right? That's part of the, the, the architectural design of the array. But in addition to that, there's a number of VMware specific design elements including um, the flash array is designed for the default vSphere multipathing. Uh, we choose the, the, the latency uh, profile within the PSP. Uh, our, 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 VIA, our VASA provider, our VAAI, VAAI integration, and our SRA services are all built into the array. There are no external applications that run somewhere. We have no uh, per volume IOP limits like you used to see in old SAN arrays. And we have no misaligned I.O. because uh, all of our data is written to a 512 byte block size, as well as all the support for all the, the, the supported protocols from VMware. I think this, go, this design principles, these design principles go back to um, the construct that when you're hosting a cloud, 
um, and you you host some workloads that are performance centric, some that are availability centric, and some that are um, cost centric. And when you're looking at architectures that aren't comprised of the flash array, you are having to configure hardware differently to optimize each of those um, centricities where you get it all within the flash array right out of the box without having to do anything. Now, obviously flash array is just part of this stack. And I wanna share with you some of the depth and the breadth that we have within our VCF architecture that focuses on simplicity. You may remember that I said that this conversation usually could take three hours. Here's a section that's gonna show a high level overview of what we can do, but could be a deep dive conversation in each box. We have a tool called Smart Config. This provides automated day zero deployment of the bare metal flash stack. It will go ahead and configure compute, networking, and storage. Um, once that, that hardware has been cabled up and powered on, it can complete that end-to-end that -end installation of a flash stack um, in about 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the size of the configuration. Oh, I should highlight here too, anything in orange is unique to Pure. Once Smart Config has, has configured the hardware for a new deployment, we hand off to VMware Cloud Builder. Cloud Builder is the tool that VMware provides for every VCF deployment, regardless of vendor, that actually goes and it creates the VMware Cloud Foundation, including the management domain, and it allows you to import the hardware inventory for workload domains. We support vSphere Lifecycle Manager. This is what goes ahead and updates the software binaries in each ESXi host. It does so in a non-disruptive manner, putting each host into maintenance mode, applying the binaries, and then bringing that host out of maintenance mode. What's unique about doing it on FlashStack is because we are a disaggregated architecture, there is no loss of data protection like you have when you do this with an HCI-based platform. Our simplicity support is extended with Pure, uh, Pure One, which delivers non-disruptive flash array firmware updates that occur not just non-disruptively, but also without any loss of performance. So they can actually be delivered at any point in time in the day, uh, which is not something we would recommend, uh, but does help you ensure that you are delivering to the service levels that you've provided for your end users. We extend end-to-end -end support with SDDC Manager, or what I like to call application through infrastructure management. SDDC Manager actually provisions the workload domains. I may have mentioned this earlier, but it'll, it'll provision the compute, the storage, and the networking from FlashStack, creates the vSphere cluster, creates all the ancillary management interfaces for that workload domain, including a vCenter server, the NSX managers, the vROP uh, tools, et cetera. So um, um, it's, it's what I would say with, with SDDC Manager is it kind of bridges that gap that you used to have from end-to-end -end management that you had only in HCI in the past, and now you can have on a disaggregated infrastructure or a converged infrastructure. And then last, what's unique about FlashStack is to my knowledge, it's the only architecture in the, in the industry um, that has um, stateless architecture, meaning the hardware addresses are separated from the hardware itself. In the UCS, that's the service profiles. We never gave it a fancy name in the flash array. It was just a design principle. And this stateless architecture means when you actually have to go through a hardware refresh, instead of having to rack and stack a new set of kit, IP address it, configure it, you know, move all your, your security protocols over, move all your monitoring apps over, and then do a workload migration, it's just an in-place upgrade, right? You put a host in maintenance mode, you yank out the blade, you slide in a new blade, and all VMware sees is now you've got more compute and memory available in that host. And the same is said at the storage level. So we actually believe that FlashStack is the simplest VCF architecture in the market today. And this is trying to summarize that. Now, I believe, Kyle, you've got a demo to show us. Oh, do I? Um, so this demo, uh, as, as Vaughn mentioned earlier, VCF 4.1 went GA today. So we just wanted to show you guys quickly, guys and girls, quickly what, um, what a VVols-based workload domain deployment looks like. Um, so if, if you want to go ahead and play it, I think one of the new things, oops, we, oh, there You're we fine. all right, cool. So, so one of the new things that's in SDDC manager, we can see storage settings, right? So within storage settings and SDDC manager, we're going to be able to add a VASA provider, right? VASA providers are required for VVOLs. 
Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is give the VASA provider uh, IP address. It's a controller um, IP address. It's not a port. It only does single controller support for now. Uh, we'll give it a name. Uh, we will give it, a, in my case, a pure VVOLS, which is an array admin username and that password. Uh, it has to be VVOL container um, for now, at least. And then you can see there's a list of protocols to select. Um, we're really excited because this is the first time iSCSI has been uh, supported as well. So there we can see we've got our VASA um, provider registered. Um, the other thing we have to do is go into the array and connect our pure protocol endpoint to the workload domain host group that we are going to create. Um, so this one we'll call uh, VCF sisters. So that's now that the pro pure protocol endpoint is connected. Um, we go down to it, just, there it is. You can see the endpoint is there and connected. Now we hop back over to SDDC Manager. Again, we'll commission these hosts. This being 4.1, um, we can see that uh, now we've got a VVOL storage type as well. Um, by the way, we are very honored and humbled to have been a design partner for VMware for this new product. That's uh, super exciting for us. Um, so as you can see, we selected the fiber channel storage uh, type. Uh, we'll go ahead and add that host. Um, I skip here just to add uh, the other three hosts that are going to be part of this workload domain in the interest of time. As everyone saw before, we validate everything just to make sure that you know everything's good on these ESXi hosts before we commission them into SDDC Manager inventory. Um, you can see there too, storage type is now VVOL. Um, so now all those hosts are in SDDC Manager. Uh, we'll go ahead and actually create our VVOLs based workload domain. Uh, here in just a sec. All right, so we can see now there's that VVOL storage type option in the wizard selection. Um, this is going to be a Kubernetes uh, workload domain, which we'll show later in this presentation. Uh, and then I'm just going to quickly go through, you know, all the standard uh, workload domain creation wizards. Uh, there's our vCenter. Uh, we're standing up NSXT here as well. Um, which you have to do as part, which you have to do now is uh, part of workload domain deployments. Um, we got our managers all in there. Um, and so here's the new interesting thing, right? So now we select our VVOL protocol, that VASA provider that we registered earlier, um, that VVOL container, our user, and then we give it a name. We'll call this uh, VVOLs FC workload domain one. Um, now that will match with whatever hosts, you know, it matches up with um, those three that we used in this case. Uh, we select them. And then uh, again, not going to share my licenses, sorry. Uh, and then we click next, and then we click finish to build this workload domain. Um, since there's no existing uh, NSXT instance here, um, it does take about an hour ish, you know, to kind of build everything up because NSXT does take a while to deploy. If you join a workload domain to an existing NSXT instance, in my experience, it's about 30 to 45 minutes. But that's end to end, right? That's everything being deployed. Um, and we can see, you know, there's some tasks here. It's deploying uh, our vCenter instance. Um, skipping ahead, uh, we've now deployed vCenter. And last thing I wanted to show is that, you know, we can, we're, we're actually creating our VVOL data stores here, you know, which is good. Um, and then as we can see, right, under storage providers, uh, there is our flash array VASA provider that we registered. Um, the only other step that we highly recommend doing, we've got KB articles and longer demo videos that show how to do this is registering the other storage provider against this, um, just you know, to have that failover capability. And you can do that with our uh, vSphere web client plugin. Um, and anyway, yeah, and there's our vVol data store as well. Um, so so is, is it, I know you said it's proprietary, it's a pure thing, but yes. can you give us some, so interested in what is, is driving it, it can't just be scripts, I can't believe that. Like, is it Ansible, is it what, or, or is your own proprietary thing? And does it interact in, plug into other parts of the infrastructure that might be doing this infrastructure as a service, but for different parts of the infrastructure. Yeah, so Gia, um, it's good to hear your voice. Um, hey, and, great, <laughs> and, and great question. And I don't have all the answers. Maybe Kyle can jump in here, but um, um, you know, the, the, the industry always kind of moves in, in different segments, right? And, and one of the things that um, I think if you look um, at the, the life of like providing infrastructures under VMware deployments, right? We kind of went through like the, the vendor based, you know, engineered system like VBlock. And then we kind of moved to like reference architectures that were validated and they were more flexible. And then you kind of had HCI come up and it was like, like nobody really cares that HCI co-locates compute and storage. What everybody cared about was like, look, I can deploy it real simple 
And when I manage my applications um, or when I manage my infrastructure, it does not impact the availability of my applications, right? And so that last framework, right? Give simple deployment, you know, the day zero and allow it when I have to do everything after day zero, uh, when I have to do any maintenance on the, the infrastructure, don't interrupt my applications, right? That was really kind of the areas where we've been focusing on the last couple of years. And so smart config is not a tool for VCF. It is a flash stack tool that will manage the bare metal setup um, of the flash stack infrastructure. And again, you know, can take something that, you know, was, was you know, piece part and maybe multi-domain experts and basically can say, you know, uh, you know, give us your, you know, give us your IP range or point us to a DHCP server and, you know, give us the credentials you want us to put in here and it'll, it'll set it up from, from uh, bare metal to uh, an infrastructure. Um, what the technology that's behind it, I don't know if Kyle, um, I don't know if you know what it's, it's what it's written in. De Debian based OVA with a lot of scripts and, you know, so it's a partner facing tool. You can input JSON files to it to automate a lot of that stack. And, and, and you know, the one thing I, I would mention with it, um, and I'm, I'm, I'll try to be quick, so I know we're a little, we're, we're getting a little bit behind, but not too bad, um, is that, um, you know, we've shown these ESXi hosts that are set up and kind of ready to be imported into SDDC Manager, showing it like it's a simple thing to do. And it, uh, clearly it's not, right? I mean, racking and stacking and bringing up hardware takes, you know, probably more time than, than what I've shown in terms of commissioning hosts. And, and uh, Smart Config automates those steps to basically bring you up to the point of having ESXi hosts that are ready to go. Um, if you go to the VMware platform guide on Pure Storage's website, we wrote like a three-part user guide that talks about taking, uh, starting with smart config, handing it off to VCF, and then starting to deploy workload domains. Um, so yeah, the VMware platform guide on Pure Storage has probably too much information on this, but <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd, I'd suggest uh, taking, taking a look at that for, for more detail on smart config. 